Shalom. Shalom. First off, foremost, I want to say call hello. Yahweh by Hashem, Yahweh Shai by Hashem, Rechabadash. Say double honor to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone. Much peace, love, and salutations to you, brothers and sisters out there pushing. This is Great Millstone Dallas. This lesson, what we're going to center it around is vengeances of the Lord. As we uh, continue to preach and confess the name of Yahweh Hashem, Yahweh Shai out there, raise up the hopeful elect in the spirit of the Lord. We have to remain patient and vigilant on the Lord's return. You know, we're in a condition of tyranny. We're in a, condi uh, a condition of being subject to the manner of this world. And, um, you know, it, it's a punishment, you know. But uh, the scripture says that we, we, if we endure and overcome, the Lord is going to come and revive us and save us out of here. Today, what we're going to center around that mindset is uh, um, we're going to read out of the book of Josephus. Now, Josephus was a Pharisee, um, you know, who kind of rose up after the time of the Lord. And uh, he recorded a lot of history from his perspective and from his learnings and teachings on what happened, you know, to the Israelites throughout the course of history and time. He's very famous in kind of like talking about the Jewish revolt and kind of going in on that and from his perspective of how things were going down because he was there he was in he was he lived during those times and so you know people try to discredit Josephus but he does bring out a lot of facts and information that clear up some some things that might be clouded in history we want to touch on a little bit of that so for the, those of you who are following along and and where we like to what's the name of the site where we get Josephus from yeah, sacred te sacred text.com. You can go online and go to sacred text.com and pull up the book of Josephus. So, for those of you that have bought the book, we're going to be reading um, from um, the Wars of the Jews, the section of the Wars of the Jews, because there's a couple of sections in there, mm -hmm. a few sections in, in Josephus, but the section that we're reading from is the Wars of the Jews. We're going to be reading from book number seven, and we're going to start at chapter. Eight, right? We'll start at chapter eight. Unless there's a point that you have this. Right? I got a precept real quick. Okay, okay, kind. We're gonna start there. So you can go ahead and turn there. We're gonna read a little bit of that, but we're gonna touch on a little bit of mindset of 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 how they moved versus what Yahweh Bashim Yahushua wants. It's kind of been the topic. So let's actually really go in on it. Kind of quick precept. This is Zephaniah chapter three, verse eight. It says, "Therefore wait, therefore wait ye upon me," saith Yahweh. Until the day that I rise up to the prey. For my determination is to gather the nations, that I may assemble the kingdoms, to pour out mine indignation upon them. Excuse me. That I may assemble the kingdoms to pour out pour upon them mine indignation, even all my fierce anger, for all the earth shall be devoured with the fire of my jealousy. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's right, man. So, hey, that, it's, it's clear. Did you have a point you want to? Yeah, the, well, the key point is that the Lord said specifically, he said to wait upon him till he rises up to the prey. You know, our job isn't on this side to, you know, take up uh, uh, arms by carnal means to try to take down the, uh, the Roman Empire all over again because we are in the Roman Empire revised. So the Lord didn't command us to take up arms and to get together and try to, you know, do things within our own power because ultimately when you have and when you do that and you, when you read the ancient Sakari what they did that really is trying that that's really subsetting the prophecies uh, you trying to you trying to force the most high's hand by doing that when the prophecies have to play out yeah. okay it was written in the prophecies that what the roman empire will rule then a little horn will, you know so these things happening are all through the spirit of probably how about shimal shah for his will to be done at the end of the day not your will not our will you know so just want to bring that part up. Kind, kind, kind. So yeah, you know, Joseph Cephas, he was a part of uh, the military. He, 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 you know, actually held a fort for some time. They ended up getting defeated. He ended up kind of getting in the good eyes of the Romans and that allowed him to kind of do some of the things that he was able to do. His perspective of the Sakari was that they was doing too much. Yeah. And you can read about that. And when you understand the scriptures and the mindset that the Lord was pushing, you know, he was he was right. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So if you can get Psalms 94 and 1, Baba Bushai. I got it. Go ahead, Chan. Psalms 94 and 1, it says, O Lord, power to whom vengeance belongeth. O power to whom vengeance belongeth, show thyself. Yeah, man, the, the vengeance belongs to Yahweh Shah, man. 
And it's gonna go down the way he wants, not the way that we contrive. All right, go ahead. Lift up thyself, thou judge of the earth. Go ahead, champ. Render a reward to the proud. Lord, how long shall the wicked, how long shall the wicked triumph? Mm -hmm. How long shall they utter and speak hard things and all the workers of iniquity boast themselves? That's right. Now skip down to 14. Verse 14, it says, for the Lord will not cast off his people, neither will he forsake his inheritance. Go ahead. But judgment shall return unto righteousness and all the upright in heart shall follow it. Go ahead. Who will rise up for me against the evildoers? Mm -hmm. Or who will stand up for me against the workers of iniquity? Go ahead. Unless the Lord had been my help, my soul had almost dwelt in silence. Go to verse 22. Verse 22, it says, But the Lord is my defense, and my power is the rock of my refuge. Uh -huh. And he shall bring upon them their own iniquity, and shall cut them off in their own wickedness. Yea, the Lord, our power, shall cut them off. And so we have to trust that. We have to trust that the Most High has a process of damnation for, uh, for the nations. And we have to trust the process that the Most High, that the Lord, Yahweh himself, sent for us to do. He told us to, what was it, in Matthew, the 24th chapter? Mm -hmm. He says, go and preach this word to the, into the four corners, basically. Mm -hmm. and, then, and, and, and then I'm going to come save you. So we have to trust that these words that we're speaking, waking up the hearts and the minds of the people, is the actual war. It's the actual battle. It's the actual fight. Not guerrilla, physical war, guerrilla warfare. Right. Okay? And so, unless brothers got points, I want to go ahead and go into the book of Josephus. Okay. And uh, we'll just make points from there. If brothers have points that they want to bring out, feel free. Okay. Alright, so this is uh, the War of the Jews, uh, book 7, chapter 8, and we're going to start at part 1. It says, concerning Masada and those Sakari who kept it. Now, the Sakari had been around before they had captured Masada, and they were known for just being gullied, man. They, you know, it was hard to know if you did something outside of what they liked or wanted, they would kill you. Yep. Mm -hmm. Women, children, I'm talking about Israelites, not just Romans, Israelites they would kill, okay? So, um, <laughs> we see some of this today, this, this energy. Go ahead. Kind of says... Concerning Masada and those Sakari who kept it, and how Silva betook himself from the siege of that citadel, Eleazar's speeches to the besieged. Mm -hmm. All right, we're going to begin to read part one here. It says, when Bassus was dead in Judea, Flavius Silva succeeded him as procurator there, who, when he saw that all the rest of the country was subdued in this war, and that there was but one only stronghold that was still in rebellion, he got all his army together that lay in different places and made an expedition against it. This fortress was called Masada. It was one Eleazar, a potent man, and potent means somebody who was like very like persuasive, you know what I mean? Uh, a potent man and the commander of these Sakari that had seized upon it. He was a, de he was a descendant from that Judas who had, who had persuaded abundance of the Jews as we have formerly related, not to submit to the taxation when Cyrenius was sent into, Jude into, excuse me, into Judea to make one. Right. And so they said, hey, we don't want to pay these taxes. We're going to revolt. Yep. Just like, you know, you had uh, the Boston Tea Party. Mm -hmm. yep. You know, they, you know uh, uh, but what did the Lord say about paying taxes? Did he say do that? Matthew 26. Yep. You know, yeah. let's get a scripture on that. You got Matthew 26? Matthew 22. 22. 22. It's a lot. This is 15. Okay. This is the book of St. Matthew, chapter 22, verse 15. It says, Then went the Pharisees and took counsel how they might entangle him in his talk. <laughs> and they do the same thing with us today, man, trying to entangle us in our words. You know, it says, And they sent out unto him their disciples with the Herodians, saying, Master, we know that thou art true. And teach us the way of the most high in truth. Neither carest thou for any man. For thou regardest not the person of men. Tell us therefore. What thinkest thou? Is it lawful to give tribute unto Caesar or not? Mm -hmm. So they try to have him amongst the Herodians. And they say. What do you think? Trying to trip him up. Mm -hmm. yeah. Let's see what they say. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know. Because we can get them caught up right here. Yep. Go ahead. So it says, but Yahweh shall perceive their wickedness and said, why tempt ye me, ye hypocrites? 
show me the tribute money. And they brought unto him a penny. And he said unto them, whose, whose is the image and superscription? They say unto him, Caesar's. Then said he unto them, render therefore unto Caesar the things which are Caesar's, and unto the most high the things that are the most high's. When they had heard these words, they marveled and left him and went their way. Right. And so it was a, it was a good it was basically a good breakdown. Now was that the mindset of the of the Sakari? No. no. Absolutely not. And this mindset led to an open battle and contention that we we are not commissioned to go into until the Lord comes. So, you know, it can be sexy, so to speak. To understand these freedom fighters, so you can, some people call them freedom fighters, some people call them, you know, radicals. Right. Depending on the perspective. Right. Okay. But if you're looking from the lens and the perspective of what Yahweh was teaching, already right now we have a contradiction. Yeah, but you're right. Already we have a contradiction between what the Lord wants us to do as far as vengeance. And what, what these people did. And we're just using the Sakari as an example. Because the, the, the Sakari is one of many groups that was going on. Okay? Kind but they're just at the forefront right now. And it's a good example. You know, easy. Easy work to teach from. Go ahead. Let's go back to Josephus. Can I get a quick precept? Yeah, absolutely. It's the book of Acts chapter 5, verse 37. It says, And after this man rose up Judas of Galilee in the days of the taxing, and drew away much people after him, he also perished. And all, even as many as obeyed him, were dispersed. Yeah, so Eleazar came out of that line. Exactly. So call and read what you had again. Kind of. This is the book of Acts chapter 5, verse 37. So for those of you following, the, that was a great precept. The water, I didn't even think about that precept. Good job. The, what we're reading about here about this Eleazar who's holding Masada comes from that line. Right. Of this Judas who got killed. Exactly. Doing something that the Lord said. Just render unto Caesar's what Caesar's. Mm -hmm. Okay? Mm -hmm. Shoot, well, we were talking about taxes before we started. Yo, <laughs> that was the spirit, actually. That's a dilemma, man. We were just like, oh, man. Because we're brothers that, yo, you know, making money. You can't, can't, you can't like, play yeah, like that. Yeah. Like, yeah. You know, I don't look forward to tax season. No, not at all. But I'm not going to revolt against the exactly. American government. You got to figure a way out the, you know the deal. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead. Exactly. Uh -huh. uh, verse 37. Acts 5 and 37. After this man... Because they wanted to do this at first. Uh -huh. Which it says, after this man rose up Judas of Galilee in the days of the taxing. Mm -hmm. And I'm gonna get that word. Uh, I'm gonna get that word taxing real quick. I get it. Okay. okay. X five. And X five and thirty seven. Okay. Come. So we're here in X five thirty seven. We're getting this word taxing in the Greek. Strong's G. Oh, it. He saw it. Do it. 582, apographe. Mm. Apographe. Apographe. A writing off, a uh, transcript, uh, an enrollment or registration in the public records of persons together with their income and property as the basis of a census or valuation, i.e., that it might appear how much tax should be levied upon each one. Right, mm -hmm. so they're basically uh, writing down what you got, what you brought in, and you have to render a, a portion of that unto the you know the hegemonic state, mm -hmm. Caesar. Mm -hmm. All right, and that's how they knew who was who, what was what, who was, all this you had to pay. Oh, you know, what you had, how much you had, you know, how much property that you owned, you know. <laughs> that's right. Oh, so. It says, uh, after this man was of Judas of Galilee in the days of the taxing. And drew away much people after him. He also perished. And all, even as many as obeyed him, were dispersed. That's right. That's right. That's right. Yep. And so there's another account in Luke 2 at the top. But we're going to keep it moving. Kind of. Uh, going back to Josephus here, chapter 8, uh, part 1, book 7. Uh, it says... Uh, I'll read that part again. It says, He was a descendant from that Judas who had persuaded abundance of the Jews, as we have formerly related, not to submit to the taxation when Cyrenius was sent into Judah to make one. Mm -hmm. For then it was that the Sicarii got together against those that were willing to submit to the Romans, 
Yeah. So people who were just doing, you know, just paying the taxes, the the Sicario was like, man, y'all some hoes. Yep. Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm-hmm. Go ahead. It says, uh, submit to the Romans and treated them in all respects as if they had been their enemies, both by plundering them of what they had, by driving away their cattle, and by setting fire to their houses. Right. And so are we supposed to be doing that to our brothers? Scriptures talk about no, don't render evil unto your don't be rendering right. evil to your brother. I believe that's in like Leviticus. Mm-hmm. You know? I'll look for it here in a second. <clears throat> but just imagine that, man. Now when the Lord said, Render unto Caesar's what is Caesar's, the the, the Sakari were in a mindset of, hell no, you know? You know? Yep. You got more? Uh yeah, a little more. I was about to find that law about driving not driving away somebody else's cattle. It says, uh Uh-huh. It says, for they, for they said that they differed, that they deferred not at all from foreigners by betraying in so cowardly a manner that freedom which Jews thought worthy to be contended for to the utmost, and by owning that they pre- preferred slavery under the Romans before such a contention. Mm. Man. Now, this was in reality no better than a pretense and a cloak for the barbarity which was made use of by them. And to color over their own avarice, which they afterwards made evident by their own actions. Mm-hmm. For those that were partners with them in their rebellion joined also with them in the war against the Romans and went further lengths with them in their imputed undertakings against them. Go ahead. And when they were again convicted of dissembling in such their pretenses, they still more abuse those that justly reproached them for their wicked for their wickedness. Yeah, man. So people that was like, "Hey, man, y'all doing too much. Yep. Y'all killing y'all own people. Y'all pillaging, mm-hmm. taking their goods, murdering." That's what the word Sakari goes back to: murderers. All right. So the Sakari were unjust in the way that they dealt with their brothers, and we see that today. Man, when you want to go out and do your own thing and try to produce your own thing. It can create corrupt minds to get more. Because in order to come up against the Romans, if you want to carnally come up against Esau, you're going to need to acquire a lot of resources. Oh, yeah. And the fact of the matter is <laughs> that, <coughs> that wicked type of ambition is going to lead you to take from your people. But you're going to justify it with a, a sense of self-righteousness. Mm-hmm. All right, so the Sakari had a sense of self-righteousness that led to wicked deeds. And that's why when we, when we want to take vengeance of ourselves, you know, you want to get your lick back. Usually it, it, it causes you to what? Treat other people wrong, man. Yep. Okay. Yep. Continuing on. It says, and indeed, and indeed, that was a time most fertile in all manner of wicked practices. And so much that no kind of evil deeds were then left undone. Nor could anyone so much as devise any bad thing that was new. So deeply were they all infected. It says, so like it says, nor could anyone so much as devise any bad thing that was new, meaning that they did everything bad under in the in, under, in the book. Oh, they yeah, were wicked, bro. They were cheating know? people, lying on people, <clears throat> setting people up, assassinating people that they felt like was not going to uh, go uh, again uh, with their agenda, not knowing what they were going to do. Mm-hmm. When you go into the history of the Sakari, bro, there was uh, there was a lot of scumbag activity. <laughs> okay, this is not the mindset that Yahweh Bashemir was pushing. If somebody can get get that uh, first Peter, uh, first Peter two, yeah, start at uh, thirteen. Uh, that far up, you know what? That's that's cool. I mean, mm, go ahead. Yeah, that's fine. Come. This is the book of First Peter, chapter two, verse thirteen. Submit yourselves to every ordinance of man for the Lord's sake, whether it be to the king as supreme or unto governors as unto them that are sent by him for the punishment of evildoers and for the praise of them that do well. Mm. For so is the will of the Most High that with well-doing ye may put to silence the ignorance of foolish men as free and not using your liberty for a cloak of maliciousness but as servants of the Most High. And that's what you saw. You see a cloak of maliciousness. Yep. <laughs> We're reading about this cloak of maliciousness. Okay, what verse are you in? Uh, that was the end of verse 16. Keep reading. Verse 17. Honor all men. Love the brotherhood. Love the brotherhood. Mm-hmm. 
Love the brotherhood. Love the assembly of, 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 of the brotherhood. Go ahead. Fear the most high. Honor the king. Go ahead. Servants, be subject to your masters with all fear. Mm -hmm. Not only to the good and gentle, but also to the forward. Mm -hmm. For this is thankworthy if a man for conscience toward the most high endure grief, suffering, wrongful. Right, so you might so sometimes you might have a, a hard master, whether Israelite or Roman or Greek. And sometimes you might have someone who's chill. Those of uh, us that's being raised up in uh, this truth, you got to know how to navigate. Because how you move could bring wrath to the rest of the brotherhood. If you say, oh, he's one of those Hebrew Israelites, this is how they are. That, how your, your actions could play out on how the whole body is, is viewed. This is why it's dangerous to have a group calling themselves the Sakari out there. That are associated with murdering, assassinations, right. because that can be utilized to blanketly say this is the Hebrew Israelite movement. Right. Oh, yeah. When the Lord said, "Don't do that," right, and that's why it has to be called out. Oh yeah, right. Yeah. So it's a problem. Go ahead, champ. Because you gotta have, you can't have short-term thinking. Right. You gotta think about how your actions implicate and and. Affect the whole body. Right. That's right. Mm -hmm. Okay. I got something. Uh, 2 Corinthians 6, verse 2 and 3. It says, uh, For he saith, I have heard thee in a time accepted, and in the day of salvation have I secured thee. Behold, now is the accepted time. Behold, now is the day of salvation, giving no offense in anything that the ministry be not blamed. That's right. And that's just, hey, that's just pretty much says what it says, man. You don't want to give an offense or nothing. So that what? Because your actions, based upon how you may feel at the moment, which may not necessarily be in the spirit, that could affect the whole body, man. That could get the whole body jacked up. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, looking at the Sakari in ancient times of how they moved and how they operated, a lot of issues of what the Sakari did put hell on pretty much all the Jews, man, all the Jake, Israel. You know, whereas it was just killing, I'm talking about Israelites just getting killed, man, because of the actions behind these dudes, man. That's right. You know, so we want to make we want to make sure that, you know, every action and every thought that we have, every action that we take, every word that we speak, that we take the body of Yahweh Bashan Shah in consideration over ourselves, man. You know, because your flesh can your flesh can make you want to justify yourself in your flesh. Like, man, you know, man, fuck that. You know what I'm saying? But at the end of the day, what is that needful for the body? You know? And they didn't have a body in consideration about how they were moving, you know? That's right. What verse, well, what verse was that you read, bro? Second uh, Corinthians 6 and 3. Okay. Let me jump back to that uh, 1 Peter 2. Okay. Okay. Back in the book of 1 Peter 2 and 20. For what glory is it if when ye be buffeted for your faults, ye shall take it patiently? But if when ye do well and suffer for it, you take it patiently. This is acceptable with the Most High. Mm -hmm. So we're patiently, we're patiently waiting for salvation, man. Right. Building up the what? The hearts and the minds of the, of, of the hopeful elect to be how watching me on shot. That's your job. That's the war. That's the battle. Not to come up against Rome in some type of uh, mindset of where the Sakari is. Right. Which what we're reading about here was a tremendous failure. Yeah. And it goes against the it's, it's an anti messiah mindset. Okay. Go ahead, Jim. Uh Romans chapter twelve or seventeen. Yeah, we were gonna pull that one. Yeah, yeah. Okay, you wanna hold up? Uh no, read it. Go ahead. Uh Romans twelve and seventeen. Recompense to no man evil for evil. Provide things honest in the sight of all men. Bro, so were the Sakari being honest when they were doing uh, assassination attempts? No. Sneaking doing this, stealing people's uh, resources. People stuff. You know, break they break in people there in Masada, bro. If you read the story of Masada, they had a group of guys going around to everybody's house every day, breaking in their stuff, taking whatever little food they had. Okay, because they were being besieged, so it got it got bad. That wasn't in Masada. Wasn't it like uh, only like two women and five children made it? Or like, yep. and they and they was in like a some. Jar or something like that? Yeah, I mean, uh, there's an account in the Josephus of who got up out of there. Two women, some kids. Everybody was killing, they killed, killed themselves, mostly. Okay? Man. 
<clears throat> if it be possible, as much as lie in you, live peaceably with all men. Dearly beloved. It said, if it be possible. And then, and, and that's what Josephus was trying to say. It's, it's possible for us to just, yo, chill. Go ahead. Dearly beloved, avenge not yourselves, but rather give place unto wrath. For it is written, vengeance is mine, I will repay, said the Lord. Mm -hmm. That's what in A. And that's what it takes patience. Okay? More? Go ahead, John. Back in 1 Peter chapter 2 and uh, verse 21, it says, For even hereunto were ye called, because Hamashiach also suffered for us, leaving us an example that ye should follow his steps. Mm -hmm. Right? And if I can say, you know, Yahweh Shai, he really. You know, when he came on the earth, like it says in the scripture, he made himself with no reputation, no authority, you know. Um, and pretty much, you know, he had, he, he could have, like, you know, it, it wasn't written to go that way, obviously, but he had, he was able to perform miracles, bro. Like, he was able to perform spiritual, spiritually divine things. Like, you don't think if he really wanted to, like, he could have... Could have called Legion. Yeah, he could have did some stuff, man. He, even uh, 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 when he was fasting for 40 days and 40 nights, when Satan came unto him and tempted him, mm -hmm. he said, uh, Satan offered him everything. Right. Mm -hmm. But it wasn't written for it to go that way, you know? I got a precept uh, Tim, to just back up what the brother's going into. This is uh, St. John 18, and I'll start at 33. It says, then Pilate entered into the judgment hall again and called Yahweh Shai and said unto him, Art thou the king of the Jews? Yahweh Shai answered him, Sayest thou this thing of thyself, or did others tell thee of it of me? Pilate answered, Am I a Jew? Thine own nation and the chief priests have delivered thee unto me. What hast thou done? Yahweh Shai answered, my, king, my kingdom is not of this world. If my kingdom were of this world, then would my servants fight, that I should not be delivered to the Jews, but now is my kingdom not from thence. So that's the point being made. Like you were saying, Yahweh Shai, he had the authority and the ability. If he wanted to just overthrow Rome, he could have did it. But he was set to fulfill the will of his father, man. He had to go through that course, you know. If I could say, carnal man can't get that. Right. A carnal man cannot receive that. It's too much for them. To That's bear. a Martin Luther's King spirit to niggas like the Sakari today, you know, mm -hmm. to have to take the low, so to speak, in the eyes of men. Yep, Yahweh Shah took, took the low, so we got to take the low. That's the exactly. Point blank, blank, period. Servant is not greater than his master. Mm -hmm. right. I want to go back to uh, Josephus. Yeah. So jumping back to Josephus here, uh, let's see. I'll start up here. It says, and indeed, that was a time most fertile in all manner of wicked practices, insomuch that no kind of evil deeds were then left undone. Nor could any one such, nor could anyone so much as devise any bad thing that was new. So deeply were they all infected and strove with one another in their single capacity and in their communities. Strove with one another. Constant infighting, constant warring, constant insecurities. We don't know who's on whose side, what's going on. This person killing that person. You, you see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. It did not the scripture say that a kingdom that's divided against itself can't stand. Can't stand that's yeah. right. You know, so they that that you know, all that infighting and all that all that, you know, madness and niggardry, because that's all it really was, it really ultimately led to the destruction of the of the of the whole faction. Yeah. You <laughs> Reservoir know? dog type of spirit, just dog eat dog. Mm -hmm. You know. There ain't no honor among thieves. Right, exactly. You know? Yep. It says, and in their communities who should run the greatest lengths in impiety toward the Most High. Whew, man. So, you know, Joe Cephas is going in on the Sakari. He didn't, he, 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 he disagreed. Okay. <laughs> and the scriptures disagree with him. You know, so the, instead of trying to call Joe Cephas a coon, let's talk about the real perspective of what he was saying. He was right there. You know what I'm saying? He, he was more of a visionary because he could see, like, man, this is gonna mess up everything, you know. Yeah, he see, he was there, <laughs> like he seen what that he see, like he was there. He recognized that, it, it, especially the time that he was living, he was like, bro, the Romans ru ruling, right? We need to chill out. You throwing kerosene on said, the fire. He saw that the Lord had set up the Romans for that time, right? And he said he actually prophesied that. Yep. Okay. Mm. Go ahead. God, it says, uh, and and unjust actions toward their neighbors. 
the men of power oppressing the multitude and the multitude earnestly laboring to destroy the men of power. Look at that. Man, so just cons consistent fighting the men of power, like the heads, and you know, they, they oppressing the people and the people trying to figure out ways to, to take them down, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Just a bunch of just BS, man. It says that one part, that one part were desirous of, of tyrannizing mm -hmm. over the others. Part. Oh, excuse me. The one part were desirous of tyrannizing over others. And the rest of offering violence to others and of plundering such as were richer than themselves. Mm -hmm. So they were plundering people within Masada who had more. And Masada was built up. Mm -hmm. You know, it was fortified, considered an indestructible fort. Mm -hmm. So they took it over and was treating people like crap. Wow. And there is nothing new under the sun. Right. And you best believe the Sakari are back. Oh, yeah. All right, and they're gonna go through the same process with the modern Romans. Oh yeah. All right, go ahead. Yep. Continuing on, it says they were the Sicarii who first began these transgressions and first became barbarous toward those allied to them. They became barbarous to those allied to them. Go ahead. And left no words of reproach unsaid. And bro, do we not see that today? Man, bro, yeah. <laughs> Man. Those who were allied with them, they were barbarous to them and left no words of reproach. Go ahead. You try to correct them. They, you got it. This is uh, James 5 and 1, I mean 5 and 8 and 9. It says, Be ye also patient, establish your hearts, for the coming of the Lord draweth not. Grudge not one against another, brethren, lest ye be condemned. Behold, the judge standeth before the door. Mm -hmm. Like I say, uh, the Sakari. They was going wreaking havoc upon everyone else, even that our, even Jake, our own people. Mm -hmm. Man. Yep. I got a precept if you don't mind. Yeah, since we're in James, uh, James 4 and 1. Mm -hmm. From whence come wars and fightings among you? Come they not hence, even of your own lust, mm -hmm. that war in your members? Dang, that's good. And it says in verse 2, ye lust and have not, ye kill and desire to have, and cannot obtain. You fight in war, yet you have not because you ask not. So ultimately, their acts were not through faith, but just trying to just manhandle the situation. Right. You know? Yep. Go. Uh, continuing on, I'll read it again. It says, They were the Sakari who first began these transgressions and first became barbarous toward those allied to them and left no words of reproach and said, and no works of perdition untried. In order to destroy those whom their contravances uh, affect. Yet did John demonstrate by his actions that these Sakari were more moderate than he was himself. Mm -hmm. For he not only slew such as gave him good counsel to do so his the right. Sakari was doing all this, and this dude right here was like the extreme of the extreme. Yeah, he was like wicked. Okay. Yeah. He, he slew him, the one that gave him good counsel? Mm -hmm. <laughs> you gonna sleep your counselor, yeah. Mm -hmm. You gotta remember, and I wanna be to be fair, this is from Josephus' perspective. Right, exactly. Alright, this is his account. Right, okay. Okay. So don't let this ain't the the, the, the word of the most right. Is this the word of God? This is a historical account from Josephus' perspective, who was very close to the situation, mind you. And when we read the scriptures, we understand the mindset that we were supposed to maintain and preach. And we see that over and over and over again, the different accounts that we do in the history that we do have the Sakari is antagonistic to what the Lord and the apostles were teaching consistently. They weren't teaching to go around and do all that shit because a lot of stuff they were doing, the stuff Josephus was saying, a lot of it they were doing that. It ain't just those so Josephus don't like them. A lot of this stuff that Josephus is making an account of, no. Sakari was doing that shit, bro. Mm -hmm. Being wicked. Mm -hmm. This is not the, the vengeance of Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shah. Not of our own, uh, 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 we don't contrive it ourselves. Okay? Does that make sense, Ock? Because I want to make sure we keep a, a, a mature perspective of what we're reading. This is the book of Josephus, and we're reading his account. Okay? But it's a good history lesson. As far as understanding, because we it's, it's very easy to get wrapped because it feels good, right? You know, 
We need to take these people down. F F E saw. We ain't paying any tax. We our own nation. <laughs> you know, there's a the, my flesh part of me roots for the Sakar. You're like, yeah, get the nigga, like, like, take right. down Rome, they ain't fucking nigga, you know what I mean? <laughs> but the spiritual part of you is like, no, nah, that ain't what the Lord said. Yeah. Vengeance is of the Lord. Right. Okay, so, so, there's this glorified aspect of who the Sakari are, is this, this, this tight-knit group that were fighting against the Romans. That's not what went down. Mostly, they were some whole-ass niggas. Right, right. And we see that today. Mm hmm. Very so good. I'm just saying. Okay, okay. <clears throat> Going back, it says, uh, Yet did John demonstrate by his actions that these Sicarii were more moderate than he was himself. For he not only slew such as gave him good counsel to do what was right, but treated them worst of all Ooh. as the most bitter enemies that he had among all the citizens. Nay, he filled his entire country with 10,000 instances of wickedness, <laughs> such as a man who was already hardened sufficiently in his impiety towards the Most High would naturally do. Mm -hmm. For the food was unlawful that was set upon his table, mm. and he rejected those purifications that the law of his country had ordained, uh -oh. so that it was no longer a wonder if he, who was so mad in his impiety towards the Most High, did not observe any rules of gentleness and common affection towards men. Again, therefore, what mischief was there which Simon the son of uh, Gorius, uh, G yeah, uh, mm -hmm. Giorius, did not do? Or what kind of abuses did he abstain from as to those very free men who had sent him, who had sent him up for a tyrant? What friendship or kindred were there that did not make him more boldly in his daily numbers? For they looked upon the doing of mischief to strangers only as a work beneath their courage, but thought their, barbar their barbarity towards their nearest relations would be a glorious demonstration thereof. The Idumeans also strove with these men who should be guilty of the greatest madness. For they all, vile wretches as they were, Cut the throats of the high priest that so no part that so no part of a religious regard toward the most high might be preserved. They thence proceeded to destroy utterly the least remains of a political government and introduced the most complete sense of iniquity in all instances. Right. And so basically they created an all out war in the land by their short sightedness because they didn't agree with the high priest and basically them being subject to the Roman authority and rule. Mm -hmm. So any type of compromise that the priesthood was showing towards the Roman rulership, which at that time period, Rome was in its height. There was no way you were going to be able to defeat the Roman Empire with what we had going on. So someone who actually was thinking long term would have understood, oh, yo, we need to chill. It's just like the Lord said, wait on and wait on him. But the Sakaar didn't do that. They basically killed off all the people who had ties and they were making basically allowing the Israelites to coexist underneath the Roman Empire. Those ties were destroyed. Mm -hmm. So now the Romans are like, okay, we got to get rid of these things. Okay? Mm -hmm. Now, if we were going around doing that today, what the ancient Sakaar was doing, how long will we last as a group? <laughs> You know, people who get on say, you know, getting on TV, like, we don't like, you know, these other leaders or whatever. Or even if we just kept it within the nation of Israel, we didn't like someone teaching about, you know, go take the jab. And then we secretly assassinate them with some crazy wow, shit man. like that. Bro. Took off the map. Who, that, through? who was that dude uh, that was marching through Stone Mountain? Uh, uh yeah, a couple years ago, I know, I just um, we'll take Texas guy. Yeah, the guy. Uh, one of the yeah, one of the yeah. people shot themselves on accident. I can't yeah, remember his name. But I he got that nigga name. Yeah, he, he fell off the face of the earth. I mean, then you had you even had Grand groups. Grand yeah, yeah, that's a mess. back in the day, like Yahweh been Yahweh's group. He's a fed, probably man. You know, <laughs> doing all types of stuff, bro. All of those movements that that was uh, uh, living by the sword. We can get that scripture. I got it right here. Yeah, that. Oh, no. right here. Yeah, that uh, Yahweh Ben Yahweh. Yeah, 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 they were uh, 
like they took over like the projects, like the intent. Uh -huh. Like you said, that flesh, like get these scumbag ass drug dealers out of here. Mm -hmm. So they got the niggas out of here, but that's not the way of y'all yeah. watching y'all shot. But they were being corrupt too. Yeah. You yeah. know, when all the information came out on some of the things that they were doing, yeah. they put people to death doing all types of Damn. stuff, man. Yep. A lot of that, like some of the stuff was maybe false allegations, but some of the stuff was not false allegations. Huh. It's verified thing. facts like you know he saw him sit and watch you for years yeah and let you build up stuff man okay, so, yeah. and put it in there man have again then he's reading it like Ooh, put your way for oh he did that uh, and then show the proof of it it's like Ooh. <laughs> you know yeah. you need that rope to hang yourself you know but i got that in matthew 26. go ahead champ uh saint matthew 26 and i'll start at verse 50. It says, And Yahweh Shah said unto him, Friend, wherefore art thou come? Then came they and laid hands on Yahweh Shah and took him. And behold, one of them which were with Yahweh Shah stretched out his hand. And in another account, it'll just tell you, Peter, that's who was with Yahweh Shah. It says, And behold, one of them which were with Yahweh Shah stretched out his hand and drew his sword and struck a servant of the high priest and smote off his ear. And this is talking about Malchus. I forgot the other account where it actually names the name, but uh, verse 52, it says, Then said Yahweh shot unto him, Put up again thy sword into thy place, or into his place, for all they that take the sword shall perish with the sword. So that's the point being made. Them that live by the sword, they're going to truly die by the sword. That's the point that he was making to Peter at that time. He was rebuking him, you know, because he knew that it was his time to be delivered up to the Romans, you know. God. God, yeah, continuing on, uh, verse uh, 53, it says, Thinkest thou that I cannot now pray to my father, and he shall presently give me more than 12 legions of angels? <laughs> you don't think that if, 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 if Yahweh wanted to take down Rome in that time, he would have. Right. Easily, too. You know? It says, But how then shall the scriptures be fulfilled that thus it must be? Right. Ultimately, the scriptures the scriptures Prophecy. have to be fulfilled. Prophecy yep. has to play out. Uh -huh. We're gonna have to go through our course. Right. We're not gonna be able to make a shortcut. Man. No, we're gonna have to go out here and preach this word and stay with that mindset. Yeah. Yeah. Vengeance is gonna come from him. Yeah, that's, yeah. What that's a testimony. Yeah, I was sure. And I wish those guys don't have that testimony. Mm -hmm. Kind, kind, kind. So, uh huh? What you got, Chan? Uh, Sequarium. That's their name in the Bible. Uncle Dodge. Oh, the Sakura? Uh -huh. Oh, yeah. Sakura. Yeah, Sakura. Where did you find that? Uh, it's, uh, it's on uh, Wikipedia. Okay. And also the Overview in History, which is funny. As soon as you Google their name, uh, Alizar and them uh, yeah, they, things they, they, shows they, they, up. They things shows up. Yeah, so they about to get the attention they want. Through this yeah, they was that's assassins, man. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, you going to get that smoke. That's right. You going to get the smoke you're looking for. Z smoke. All right. All right. Um, I know you're still in the same book. I don't. I can't remember if there's any more on that that I wanted to read. Uh, I mean, it just really just goes into pretty much that whole story. When yeah. you go and read it, and you, and you guys can read, it, but I want you to skip to uh, chapter eleven, okay. and we'll read okay. part one. Okay. And two, okay. and I'll let you read it. If brothers have corresponding scriptures to go with it, bring them out. Kind of. So this is uh, The War of the Jews, Book 7, Chapter 11. And then I'm going to read Part 1 and 2. Uh, the summary of the topic is concerning Jonathan, one of the Sakari that stirred up a sedition in Cyrene and was false, excuse me, and was a false accuser of the innocent. <coughs> All right, it says, And now did the madness of the Sakari, like a disease, reach as far as the cities of Cyrene. For one Jonathan, a vile person, and, a, and by trade a weaver, came thither and prevailed with no small number of the poorer sort to give ear to him. He also led them into the desert upon promising them that he would show them signs and apparitions. Man, I, I, I bought me sure I got to get one. Yeah, because he, he was basically a false prophet. Exactly. He was a false prophet. And, and, and the scripture says that false prophets was going to rise. Mm -hmm. yep, yep, and yep. so you have these false prophets saying, like, we're going to do this, we're going to do that. You know? Mm -hmm. Look what I can do. 
<laughs> All right, and he basically he took up the, the people of a, uh, of a poor sort, people who kind of desperate in life. They're angry. You know, you live a life destitute. Man. You, you 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 can you can be mobilized. You yeah. know, <laughs> I got it for you. This is uh, Matthew chapter twenty four. I'm gonna just start at verse uh, twenty three and read to verse twenty six real quick. It says. Then if any man shall say unto you, Lo, here is the Messiah, or there, or there, believe it not. For there shall arise false messiahs and false prophets, and show great signs and wonders, insomuch that if it were possible, they shall deceive the very elect. Mm -hmm. Behold, I have told you before. Wherefore, if they shall say unto you, Behold, he is in the desert, but go not forth. Bro, come on now. <laughs> Don't do it. <laughs> wow. All right, go ahead. Behold, he is in the secret chambers, believe it not. Okay. See that? And trust me, you got these same people back here right. today. They're here. Go ahead, champ. Uh, continuing to Josephus, it says, And as for the other Jews of Cyrene, he concealed his canivory from them mm -hmm. and put tricks upon them. And put tricks upon them. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. But those of the greatest dignity among among them informed uh, Catullus, Catullus, yeah. Catullus, the governor of the Libyan uh, Pentapolis, of his march into the desert and of the preparations he made, he had made for it. So he sent out after him both horsemen and footmen, and easily overcame them, because they were unarmed men. Of these, many were slain in the fight, but some were taken alive and brought to Catullus. Mm -hmm. As for Jonathan, the head of this plot, he fled away at that time. Uh, man, it's a, what's the scripture talk about? A, a hireling doesn't care for the sheep, and mm -hmm. you know when, it, when pretty much trouble comes, he's gonna flee. He's gonna flee. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It says, uh, uh, Jonathan, the head of this plot, he fled away at that time. But upon a great and very diligent search, which was made all through the country over for him, he was at least he was at last taken. And when he was brought to Catalus, he devised a way whereby he both escaped punishment himself and afforded and afforded an accusation to Catalus. No occasion. Oh, excuse me. I'm reading it again. It says he devised a way whereby he both escaped punishment himself and afforded an occasion to Catalus of doing such doing much mischief. For he falsely accused the richest men among the Jews. And said that they had put him upon what he had did. And he said, like, man, they the ones who had, had helped me do this. They just da, 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 da. Keep reading. Man, this dude, nigga, bro. It says uh, verse 2. Now Catalus easily admitted of these. Now Catalus easily admitted of these his calamities. Uh, excuse me, his colonies. And aggravated matters greatly. And made tragical as exclamations that he might also be supposed to have had a hand in the finishing of the Jewish war. Mm -hmm. But but what was still harder, he did not only give a too easy, he did not give a too easy belief to his stories, but he taught the Sakari to accuse men falsely. Mm -hmm. Wow. Does that not sound familiar? Mm -hmm. so he accused, taught the Sakari to accuse men false. And this way, this is what happens when you're doing things out of your own flesh. There is no, the, 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 the uh, fruits of the spirit is not there. Right? Mm -hmm. Go ahead. God, and this yeah. is what you see happen in these big groups, sorry. Oh, we say, oh, we're going to buy this land, this plot of land. We're going to establish our own thing on this side. We're going to have this, we're going to have that. And then you all you hear about all these money schemes. Right. People lying. In the pocket. Yeah, 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 the pocket. <laughs> it's ridiculous. George, no, that's all right, hiding the bodies. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I mean, for real, it's the truth, though. I mean, hey, it's the truth. We see, we see it, we see it today. You know, uh, verse forty-five, or, uh, part forty-five. It says he bade he bade this Jonathan, therefore, to name one Alexander, a Jew, with whom he had formerly had a quarrel, and openly professed that he hated him. He also got him to name his wife Bernice, as concerned with him. Uh, as concerned with him, these two Catullus, uh, these two Catullus ordered to be slain in the first place. Nay, after them he caused all the rich and wealthy Jews to be slain, 
being no fewer in at all than 3,000. 3,000. All over a false accusation. Mm hmm. That this nigga said. I got a scripture real quick. Mm -hmm. Psalms 35 and 11. It says, False witnesses did rise up. They laid to my charge things that I knew not. Mm. They rewarded me evil for good to the spoiling of my soul. Wow. Cool. Psalms 35 and 11. That's right. Mm. Uh, continue on. This is a little, a little part of it. It says, This he thought he might do safely because he confiscated their effects and added them to Caesar's revenue. It confiscated and added them. Bro, so all, all of this bad wickedness is just going on, bro. Bitch. Just absolute confusion. Okay? And that's really all I wanted to read on, 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 the, on that part of the see, because I really just wanted to use the Sakari movement as an example of what we're not supposed to do and how it can lead to chaos. When you have that short-sighted thinking, how it can lead to chaos and how we have to have the mindset of what we say and do and how it affects the whole body. Especially when you want to attach yourself to a movement that's known to be uh, uh, terroristic mm -hmm. in, in, in a carnal way. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay? You know, we can be terroristic spiritually mm -hmm. and, and, and bring down you know, strongholds and, and mm -hmm. cast out principalities. Man, I was right. just about to grab right. it. Do the confession. Yep. Right. right. I was just about to grab it. That's you right. know, if somebody can get the book of Hebrews, chapter 10. Hebrews chapter 10. What verse? Verse 30. All right. This is uh, Hebrews chapter 10. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 30. It says, For we know him that hath said, Vengeance belongeth unto me. I will recompense, saith Yahweh. And again, the Lord Yahweh shall judge his people. It is a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living power. It's a fearful thing to fall into the hands of Yahweh man. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So we have to understand that. Okay? And so we're trying to do our own thing can get us caught up out here. And we don't want we don't want that. None of us want that. We don't we don't want that smoke, so to speak. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I got one. Okay? Let's go champ. I don't know if you brought this out already, but this is Romans 13 and 1. It says, let every soul be subject unto the higher powers, for there is no power but of the most high. The powers that be are ordained of the most high. Mm -hmm. Whosoever therefore resisteth the power, resists, resisteth the ordinance of, of the most high. Right. And so when you coming up in that spirit and that mindset, you're going to bring attention onto the people that the Lord didn't want. Okay. That the Lord said, avoid. And it's not about being scary. It's about actually be having a mindset of logistics and actually understanding the true nature of war mm -hmm. and not being a child. Right. Okay. Esau's been given jurisdiction right now, man, at this appointed time. Mm -hmm. So you got to allow the Lord to, 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 to take vengeance like we've been going into, man. You can't try to, you know, force the course of the Most High's hand and do a self-overthrow. Right. Are you resisting the will of the Heavenly Father? You're being disobedient. I'll read verse 2 again. It says, Whosoever therefore resisteth the power, resisteth the ordinance of the Most High. And they that resist shall receive to themselves damnation. So that's right. Those that, those, those that resist shall receive to themselves damnation. And we saw that with the Sakari movement. Mm -hmm. Okay? So if anybody got any closing scriptures, go ahead and bring them out. Awesome. Just back to the brother, uh, Daniel 4 and 17. This matter is by the decree of the watchers and the man by the word of the holy ones to the intent that the living may know that the most high ruled in the kingdom of men and giveth it to whomsoever he will as sat over the basis of men. You know, so when you know the scriptures, you have to understand that the most high rules, no matter who's up, who's winning right now, who's doing whatever, but the most high still in control. Mm -hmm. You know, and if you don't understand that and you go off your own other way, like the brother read in the, the scripture previously, you're going to take a fall, you know, because you're resisting the will of the heavenly father, man. Right. You're going to get his prophecies and what he say. And when you get outside of that, it's a guarantee hell every time. Mm -hmm. That's right. Hey, That's wrong. Uh, are you? Hmm? I got a. Are you familiar with uh, with the ferric victory? You can just bring it up. Okay, this is off of Wikipedia. 
a pyrrhic victory is a victory that inflicts such a devastating toll on the victor that it is tantamount to defeat. A pyrrhic victory takes a heavy toll that negates any true sense of achievement or damages long-term progress. Mm. So it's kind of like, you know, really what you, if you, uh, if, if you uh, pretty much put your energy into like carnal things, you've really put your energy into like the wrong thing because if, if you're looking for long term, you know, you're going, like, like the elder said, you're going to strategize. You're not going to just jump uh, head, head first. So you're going you're gonna to do what's, take the steps that's necessary rather than long term damage or anything that could devastate, you know, your progress. Right. It would be like you win in a, 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 a battle, yeah. but you lose most of your men. Yes. Yeah. So yeah. they yeah. you lose most of them. So yeah. it costs you more yeah. than the victory, you know? Yeah. We may yeah, we, we won the battle but we haven't won the war. Exactly. So that's where that comes from. That's what your Howard Shar said though. He said uh, uh you know, pretty much like if who, who who pretty much takes into account of a man like who goes into war who wants to go into war with this other kingdom over here but doesn't, you know, weigh out the balances to see if this will even be sufficient. Exactly. Right, you know what I'm saying. You going up like the other mentioned the Roman Empire, the, the Pax Romana, you know, the top of the, yeah. the you know, the, this the heightened Roman Empire against the little, you know, Sakari group. Right, you know, which they had they they numbers of people, but it wasn't in comparison to the Roman Empire. Yeah, yeah. yeah. you know, the Roman Empire was considered in prophecy as the, uh, them to have iron teeth for. They had a hegemon. They had provinces. Yeah, you know. And Israel was nothing more than a vassal at that time. So right. I think that the Roman Empire can come in there and just take them down. That would be it. You know what I'm saying? Just like, but hey, it makes me also think of uh, the parable that Yahweh Shah said about uh, uh, the wedding feast. You know, uh, not necessarily the wedding feast, but it says that uh, pretty much he had sent his servants out into the vineyard and those people of, of the vineyard slew the, slew the servants and the, and the Lord got mad. Yeah. He said he sent his armies and burnt up the whole city. Mm-hmm. You know, and that's that's pretty much what the Sakari did, man. It was being cutthroats to their own people. Yeah. You know, but I had a precept in regards to the Lord just controlling everything, real quick. This is uh, Ecclesiasticus chapter eighteen, verse three. Let's get to the point. It says, "Uh, oh, sorry, verse one. He that liveth forever created all things in general. The Lord only is righteous, and there is none other but He, who governeth the world with the palm of His hand, and all things obey His will, for He is the King of all." By his power, dividing holy things among them for the profane. So the, the key point is that well, he governed the whole world, and everything obeys. Everything obeys the Lord at the end of the day. So, you know, my like Romans thirteen. You know, uh, let everybody be subject to the powers that be set up because they are ordained of the Most High. They're set up by Yahweh Shai. Yeah, right. You know, the basis of men. He saw, he gave him blessings. What the sword. Yep. So you, you mentioned the time of Pastor Romano, you're not going to beat the Roman Empire. They were prophesied to stop and shatter everybody. How much more so Rome 2.0? Mm-hmm. When well, they got shit that we don't even know about yet. Yeah. You think you're going to mm-hmm. win? Hell no. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, they will push a button and nuke every mm-hmm. fucking right. body, bro. Exactly. You're not going to win. You're going to need high level spiritual power from on high right. to overtake this, man. It's got to be a miraculous overtaking. Mm-hmm. The only through the spirit that's going to happen. Right. right, the angels and everybody's gonna have to get involved, man. So, you know, we just have to have that mindset that vengeance is of the Lord, and that process is gonna go down. Now, I want to reiterate what we read about the Sakari came from the Book of Josephus and his perspective, which was his own bias, how he viewed. But some of the accounts that he mentioned and brought out were true, man. Yep, the Sakari, like we read that. They that's were doing too much. He yeah, we the same that. history. Yeah, man. They were doing too damn much, right. man. They weren't to be trusted. And right. how they went about things, even from the from the uh, sense of denying paying the taxes, was against what Yahweh Shah instructed. Right. When they wanted to go against the government and, and assassinate people and do all that, that's not the energy and mindset that we should be cultivating amongst the hopeful elect. Right. We should be cultivating a mindset of gathering ourselves together, getting back right, repenting. Right and, and building each other up in the spirit and in, in, in the mind of Yahweh watching your own shot. Okay. Any other points? Real quick, that's what the elect will do. The elect go look before they leap. You know, Jake don't look before they leap. They just leap out there thinking they got it. You know, it doesn't work that way. Yeah. That's right. That's right. Tunnel vision. I, I got one. Uh, this is uh, Galatians six. Uh, 
I'm going to start at 7, the point is in 10. Uh, be not, verse 7 in Galatians, the 6th chapter. Be not deceived, the Most High is not mocked. For whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. For he that soweth to his flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption. But he that soweth to the Spirit shall the Spirit reap, reap life everlasting. Let us not be weary in well doing, for in due season we shall reap if we faint not. As we have therefore opportunity, let us do good unto all men, especially unto them who are of the household of faith. So I got that, you know, to back up what the sermon is going into over Sakai, man. You know, they did, you know, wickedness onto their own people, man. Whether they were other those people could have been of the elect, man. Later on down the line. And they still did what they did to those people, to the uh, to their own people, man. You know, and they reap they, they reap that wicked reward. So they're gonna receive that wicked reward by your house, by Shah, if they if they don't repent, man. You know? Yeah, the same thing to the house, people of the household of faith today. Mm -hmm. Smite the men's service. False accuser, lying, yeah. slander. <clears throat> okay? So, yeah, we just want to touch on that little one that was edifying. I, I advise everybody to do your own research, study for yourself, study to make thyself approved, you know, uh, you know, and, and go through the scriptures and, uh, and make sure that you're understanding this because this is a... We have a lot more getting ready to come. Esau is about to come down, and it's a natural thing in your flesh to want to get your lick back or to want vengeance of yourself. Mm -hmm. And you got to make sure that you're cultivating a mindset of patience mm -hmm. and endurance until the end and, and understanding the nature of turning the other cheek and waiting for the real victory. Okay? Good. So with that, man, we say, call hello. Once again, double honors to the apostles and elders of Ray Millstone. Much peace, love, and salutations to y'all. Came out there pushing words, sincerity, and truth. Shalom. Shalom. Shalom.